How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Uh, today's episode's a little different, something we haven't done before. I, um, I've been wanting to do this for quite some time and I haven't had the time or the chance to. Uh, and now that I'm no longer offering charters full time, I have a little bit more free time. I've been finding ways to pack my schedule, but do have a little bit more free time. And something, this is something I've been wanting to do and this is it. Uh, once a month, I want to sit down with some of the local captains and just talk fishing, talk fishing reports, see what they've been seeing, what they've been catching, what the conditions have been like. I feel like uh, some of you guys that come down and visit may find these valuable or interesting, or even if you're out of town, um, you may find it interesting. So it's, again, something I've always wanted to try, so we're going to give it a shot. I would love, love to hear your feedback. If you like it, you hate it, you want more of them. Uh, I had planned on doing once a month, just kind of doing a month and recap. But uh, that's the plan. I've got a couple captains that are supposed to come today. I had a couple that had to... Um, canceled last minute they had some stuff come up but um uh oh something i did want to say huge thanks to the docks at stock island that's where i'm at right now very fishy area we're right on the harbor there's fishing boats pleasure boats uh commercial boats recreational everything um it's a a, a good friend of mine is one of the owners here at the docks this is actually where madeline and i did our uh, welcome dinner for our wedding and um, i just wanted to thank them for giving me the space to do this um, it's space is hard to come by in Key West and a big thanks to them if you're looking for a place to come grab a happy hour drink or a snack or a place for a nice dinner the docks on Stock Island it's an awesome place uh, you can watch the boats come in and unload fish they've got a live lobster tank for the kids there's always tarpon around the docks and everything like that so again you're on vacation even if you're local you haven't checked it out come out come check out the docks on Stock Island so um, right now I'm just enjoying a cold beer um, if you're familiar with fishermen they can be hard to keep track of um, so I gave them about a two hour window. Hopefully some of these guys will be wrapping up trips soon. I had, I think four guys scheduled and I think two of them had to cancel. So hopefully we'll have at least two guys come through, talk a little bit of fishing, get a report and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. So now that I got to thinking about it, I'm a captain. I spent a bunch of time on the water. I meant to give you guys a report and just kind of forgot while I'm waiting, I'll tell you what I've been seeing. We're going to go over February. Um, what's interesting about the keys is every month or season, some months are the same, but every season is so different. We have such a variety of fish. There's so many different fisheries to attack. Um, anything from diving, the deep dropping, the sword fishing, you got stuff in the Gulf. It's just, it really is an impressive fishery. Um, so February, what I've been seeing, I do a lot of diving. I do a little bit of rod and reel. Um, the rod and reel stuff, I've really been seeing the mutton snappers heat up anywhere out from the, you know, the deeper X and 400, every, everywhere even into the reef. I've been seeing and catching some really big fish uh, in 60, 70 feet of water. Um, typically on cut bait, if you can get some bigger live baits, they will eat them. But a lot of times, you know, you have smaller live baits, uh, you're going to have trouble with some of the smaller fish picking them away. Um, the tunas have been here and there. The tunas run pretty well through the um, the spring or the winter and the spring. Um, February is no different. Uh, there's typically a lot of tunas around. Uh, I pers personally don't target sales. I've seen a lot of people hooking up on sailfish. Um, and the diving game. There's groupers everywhere. Unfortunately, groupers closed right now. They're actually kind of in a spawning phase. So you'll you'll come up on some spots and you'll see 30 or 40 black groupers in a ball. It's just one of the most impressive things ever. Um, uh, actually, lobster have been heating heating up pretty well. Um, this late in the season, it, it closes into March, and um, the water comes back up just a couple degrees. And I feel like those lobster kind of fill back in some of the shallower spots. I actually caught a couple limits the last few days in uh, less than 10 feet of water, and even out on the reef, I'm seeing quite a few as well. Um, but that's pretty much all I've been up to. I've been kind of lazy this February, I'll be honest with you. I've only been out maybe six or seven days. Um, so that is my report and uh, we'll follow up with another captain here shortly. All right, well, we have our first captain showed up. This is my good buddy Garrett with All In Charters. How have you been, sir? Good, how you been? Good. All is well. Um, so ground rules, there are no ground rules. Try not to drop too many F-bombs. There's kids that watch this show. If your kids are watching, just keep an eye out. Um, <laughs> I can manage. Um, so, it. pretty much is one of you know, like I know you fish quite a bit. I just kind of you know, what are you seeing? What? Let's start with you know February for you and recap. What species have you been pulling over the rail the most? What have you been seeing? Um, I've been focusing a lot on reef fishing a lot. It would be nice to get out and do the wahoo stuff a lot, but that's really hit and miss. And when you're on yeah. a charter, you really can't miss. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do no fish, no pay. So if I come home with nothing, you know. I'm yeah charging, that's awesome that's so I, I, that's actually one of the things i see that see that you do that a lot of people don't do if you don't catch fish you don't pay with yeah, your... i'm i'm not coming home empty-handed <laughs> yeah. i might I, be like uh can you guys stay a little longer yeah because i'm not going home without no, that's, something that's the difference between a good captain is you you know you run late and i did that so many times it's just like people don't realize the stress that comes along with chartering they think we just are having fun all the time and it's like 
you know, these people are paying money to have a good time. We want to make their vacation. So it's, it's very stressful. And it, I know exactly where you're coming from. I'm not watching the clock because I want to be home. I'm like, okay, <laughs> if I, if the fish is bad here, how much time do I have to go to another spot yeah. and switch gears and change from Absolutely. doing this style of fishing to another? And you're like, okay, Absolutely. Absolutely. give this spot 10, 15 more minutes. But if nothing happens, I got to go. I got to yeah. go. No, no, I hear that. Um, uh, so I keep up with your Instagram, obviously. Everyone watches everyone's Instagram. I feel like we're all like zooming in on <laughs> way, like structures in the background, trying to see where everybody's at. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not about that too much. I, I respect everybody's privacy, but um, I've been seeing you had some pretty good catches with mutton snappers lately. Yeah, mutton's been good. Um, uh, it's always on the full moon in the winter. You run yeah. into a nice school of African pompano sometimes. I know. I you're so you're one of the few guys that actually I see. I'm going to use the word consistent, consistently, boldly consistently catch African pompano when they're around. It's like, it's one of those fish that people are like, how do you catch African pompano? Put a lot of time in. <laughs> put, put a lot of time in on a wreck or a reef where you've caught them once before. I mean, if you've caught them in a spot once, you can catch them there, there again. again. I mean, and, and you're fishing these wrecks, I mean, like hour wise, how long are you on one spot when you're pulling those in? Like, I mean, obviously there's exceptions to everything. Sometimes you land right on them, but are you putting in, you know, half a day, three hours, two hours on a wreck before you get into them? Uh, they're just tricky. I can't, I, I'm not very patient. If I don't have a fish, <laughs> if I anchor up on a spot and we don't catch anything within 30 minutes, that's like the max I okay. can do. Cause okay. a bait sits on the bottom when you're on hard, if you're next to a wreck or a reef, it really shouldn't take more than 10 yeah. or 15 minutes of soak yeah. time. Yeah, that's kind of was my thought. So I get, I, I'm, I'm very, very guilty of the being impatient. Um, but the African pompanos in general, like I, I shoot them all the time. They're obviously it's a lot easier it's when, when you can see them. It's definitely easier to force feed them than it is to. I mean, I'm not. I, I can count on both hands the amount I've caught rod and reel, and I obviously do a lot more diving. Um, are you, I mean, are you mainly catching them cut the African pompanos? I cut catch bait? the ma majority of them on cut bait, just really? because I don't ever have live bait. Usually, uh -huh. I don't have the patience to to make my clients wait for like 45, 50 minutes on a half day. There's almost no chance I'll get, have live yeah. bait on the way out. Six hour, maybe full day. Definitely, I'll put the time in 45 minutes, you know, yeah. catching threadies or ballyhoos or speedos or whatever it is, whatever live that's, bait I can that's catch. That's something else that I found impressive about you because you, you're, what's your CV, 29? 29, yep. And it's, it's an inboard, so he can't get in. A lot of these guys rely on pilchards in the winter, live bait that's, they swear and live by pilchards live bait. Garrett runs an inboard, so he can't get in shallow and run, you know, in some of those areas where those guys are catching live bait. And like he just said, a lot of times he's fishing cut bait, but he consistently pulls fish over the rail. I saw the other day you guys had like eight muttons, like a 15 pound Kubera, yeah, two APs. Yeah, we had two I was just like, man, he's crushing really cool. it. Um, so maybe, I don't know if you got some photos, I'll throw them up on the screen or something. Um, but uh, anything else? What else you been, have you been? Are you are you mainly fishing deep? You ever fishing on the reef? Uh, usually edge of the reef. I don't fish on top of the reef very much unless I'm yellowtail. Like roll like, off. Like yeah. So usually edge of the reef. The reef pretty much quits at 115. No, yeah. you'll never see it any deeper than 120. Yeah, depending on where you're really. at. Because it just the rock just never seems to go down any deeper than that, and it's all sand. So I'm usually fishing alongside it, or everything's going toward it. I never want to be on top because then I just. I can't fish the way I want, and the majority of the time you lose a lot of fish. I mean, you're yeah. gonna hook a lot of groupers fishing on top of the structure, and you're gonna, you're gonna get run you you're in gonna and get break smoked. Out. Yep, three almost, out of four times. Almost every time. Yeah, I mean, um, something I haven't done, uh, which you don't really get a lot of them on the Atlantic side. You ever get in? Have you done any lane snappers lately? You ever run in Gulf Shallows? No, it's, it's too far for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly because I gotta go all the way around Northwest Channel yeah, yeah, yeah. around the island. If I could cut through, oh yeah, because you got if the I could cut under I the bridge. Yeah. I could say I could shorten that run by like seven yeah, miles, that's and it really I, wouldn't be bad. Yeah, that's something I hadn't done yet this year. I know a lot of guys are getting on the lane snappers. The lanes? Yeah, uh, there's one or two wrecks where if I'm like, all right, I, I really need a few fish, I can put a chicken rig down and catch some like medium lanes, like three, four yeah. pounders, but yeah. I never get the sweet like five, six pound yeah, lanes like they do in the Gulf. Yeah, I've only caught a few of those in my time. And I'm like, yeah, most of the time. Uh, that's just an accident. Yeah, we actually, um, I was fishing some of the deeper wrecks and rubbles, and I mean, there's so much stuff out there. Um, we were doing the cut bait thing, and dude, I was catching porgies. Like, have you been getting them out there on the doing the mutton thing? Yeah. Any uh, big porgies? And the margates are starting to spawn, the big white margates? The mar, yeah, the mar, oh my gosh, what was it? That margate spawn was one year I, like, I had guys that just wanted a bunch of meat, and I, because <laughs> there's no size limit, no bag limit on white margate. But, but in, in his defense, when you find margates, there are hundreds yeah. of like they when they spawn 
there's like the ball of them is just like a football field wide. It's like the craziest thing it's, I've ever seen. And when you get in them, you cannot get out. Anything you put down, they're eating it. And it the population's healthy. Not a lot of people. The them. Margate tornado. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just anything in there is just getting pulled. What's in. funny though is like they always they always dupe you because you're you're targeting buttons. Oh, and if you hook a big Margate, you're like, exactly oh, this is the it. Same. They hit the same. <laughs> and honestly, when you're pulling them up, they look mostly the same until they're that last ten feet when you're like, wow, oh, there's no color, Margate. Yeah. So, yeah. The silver snapper, you know. Yep. They they get they get me every time. That's super funny. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I did really well uh, down towards the end of the bar um, on them last year. I was just silly. Yeah. Yeah. So I got in a real good one year. I got on the, there was a couple. Yep. You can couple get them big heavy there. spawns. Um, shouldn't be saying too many names. I don't think I don't think that one's public. <laughs> that actually. one's not on the charts. No, that one's know, not on the charts. Not don't worry about that one. Maybe I'll bleep that out. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anything else come to mind? What like that you've been doing? Pretty much. I mean, you stay on them, but you, you mainly bottom fish, Yeah, right? yeah. Nine times out of ten, I'm anchoring the boat up, bottom yeah. fishing. Um, yeah. It's... Do you ever get any vermilions or yellow eyes out front? You, I've got some spots where I can get them, um, some here and there, but a lot of the times, I just don't put the chicken rig down yeah. to get them. I'm just putting long, like heavy stuff down for the bigger snappers. I mean, you'll mark them sometimes. You're like, yeah. you'll see that fuzz on the bottom of the yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah. Or you're like, why are my baits getting chewed up at 200 feet? And you just got to scale right. down, scale you're way like, down. All right, then you just put a little hook and two chunks, and you can get the verms really good. But the majority of the time, I, uh, my clients aren't like, oh, we got to fill the box, we got to fill yeah. the box. So the only reason why nice. I would make someone drop a chicken rig in 200 feet is to fill the box. Yeah. So if that's not if that's not the goal. It's like, yeah. I don't need to make you reel in 3,000 feet of line today. <laughs> you know? It's, I mean, it's automatic and it is fun, but. It, get, it does get to the point where you're like, this is, it's grocery shopping or cheating. It's just so easy. Yeah, when no, no, I, 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 never, I haven't targeted them a ton. I know a lot of people love the, the bee liners, but um, it's not something I've spent a lot of time on. I see some guys catching them. I think, I hate to say it, I think some people pull it out of the, the back of the bag when it's like kind of yeah, slow. Get, but it, it's the reality of it. Sometimes tough. you have to. Yeah. Sometimes you got to put a couple fish in the boat. Times get tough. I haven't spent a lot of time doing those, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's about it. You got anything else you want to share? Any? Any other thoughts on what you've been catching, though? Uh, I've just been just I, been working all the structures out front. I mean, yeah. You got um. You have any availability coming up? Yeah, uh, I've got quite a bit of availability all the way even through the summer months. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm not booked up crazy. If, uh, if anyone wants to book it, what's the best way to reach out? You got a phone number, website? What, uh, what's what's preferred method? Phone number is the easiest. You can always just call or text me. It's what's always been easy. It's five seven four two three eight eight nine six three. Shoot me a text or call me, and uh, I also have a website. It's fishallinqs.com. You can see information and pictures and like blogs and stuff on there. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I'll feel free to just give me a ring. It's yep. easy. He stays on him. He's got an Instagram as well. Uh, the pictures don't lie, and like he said, no fish, no pay. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I appreciate you coming by. Yeah, brother. absolutely, Aaron. Thanks That's for having awesome. me, man. This is fun. All right. So we have. You guys know this guy, hey, Captain Zach Freeman with Real Fresh Fishing. Um, so what's going on, man? How you been? Good, good. Knees hurt a little bit. <laughs> Tell me about it. It was it was blowing out there today. You fished today? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, was it six hour, eight hour? I uh, only did a half day. Oh, half only, day. Only okay. Half day. How half, was it? It was actually a mix of good and bad. Yeah. Um, I tried to get. Actually, I, I didn't even try too hard this morning to get bait because the past couple of days have been so tough. I was going to ask you how bait's been. Is I, I heard a lot of guys have been struggling with finding live bait. Struggling. Struggling. Um, so I ran all the way past Sugarloaf. You know. And that was yesterday. Yeah. And I found one set of birds, and they were in about six inches of water. E. So I wasn't getting to it. Um, so today I kind of moseyed down the beach a little bit, kind of looked. Now, yeah. yeah. Gave it a half effort, and then I, I shot straight for the reef, straight offshore. Um, that edge pushed in. The blue but, edge. Yeah, kind of a blue edge. It's just not ideal what you want. Yeah. Not hard. Not like a hard not, one. Not a real hard edge. But there's a little bit of weed on it, so. Took the squid jigs out and you know hurried, got in the console and grabbed some of my mahi stuff that's still in there. Yeah, because you know it's not not mahi time. Not really mahi time. We're getting there, but it's it's, it's not there. But yet. I'll be honest, the, the the few times I've caught decent ones in the past couple of years has been in the winter. There's one within like a 20 mile radius, but it's in the winter time. It's just yeah. random. Like you don't see a lot of them in the winter, but occasionally some big ones will come in. Especially like when you're tuna fishing and stuff. Yeah, that'll happen. The live baiting yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Down to the west, that that happens. Uh, a good amount but so anyways, that edge was at like 190 there's a little bit of a weed line on there so i hustled threw a nomad on threw a squid jig on and a, a trolling lure 
and working down this edge. I mean, I have eight, ten frigates in front of me. Yeah, no, they were they were going to town, and the most amount of flying fish I've I've seen down here. Oh wow! Flying fish were just everywhere you looked. There was a hundred here, two hundred here, a thousand there. I mean, just fields of them, but they were all about six inches. Yeah. In. Cool, cool little baits to have them on video, and uh, to have the birds at least on video. Give this, this guy one second. All right. So, I'm, I caught a couple of mahi there. Had to really work for really? them. There, there was a lot of bait, not a lot of fish. Yeah. Um, and then we did that for probably an hour, hour and a half. Any size to them? Just schoolies? Schoolies. Schoolies. Keepers one, though? one was barely legal, and the other one was about 26, 27 oh, of the fork. So he's seven bad. pound fish. I yeah, mean, nowadays, no, that's, it, it, nowadays it's a big mahi down yeah, here. Yep. Yeah, and it, it was a good, it was a cow. So it was a yeah. good cow. She was fat good one um and then i went to the reef because i made sandball mix with the intention of fishing some uh -huh. of the deeper wrecks today but that current pushed in and it didn't allow me to fish those deeper wrecks yeah so i kind of had to hit the edge of the reef and it try was to, moving uh, it was moving enough to where i yeah. didn't want to put the hook down in the six footers that were out yeah. there oh yeah i heard that garrett was saying it was sporty yeah it was sporty there was a couple waves i you know we're on the hook and i'm looking at the bow and that next wave over there is as tall as a tee top. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, easy, hey, easy. Everybody hang on. Just relax for this one here. Grab a hold of something. Good thing I put an extra 10 feet of chain yeah. on, on my deep anchor. And uh, first spot, nothing. I, and I didn't mark anything. I was like, all right, let me drop some sand here and see what's up. Put some chum in the water. Nothing. Drug the anchor about uh, four tenths of a mile. Next spot, nothing again. So I get, yeah, I get some baits. Start getting that funny feeling. I get some chum in the water. I'm sitting there waiting. I'm like, all right. I set one drift back out. First bottom rod goes down. And I'm setting the bottom rod down. I got hit halfway down. I'm fishing like 110 feet. So kingfish hit me. You know, yeah. Cut me off, uh, zero macro, whatever. I'm all upset, reeling it back up. I look, the bait's fine, hook's fine. Buttons are coming up in the slick. Yeah. And as, as soon as I said that, the first drift rod goes off, mutton snapper. Nice. Yep. As we get into the boat, the lady dropped the tip, the hook came out. <laughs> he, Clean he, release. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a picture. It's a, sporty, a big one? Yeah, it was a nice eater. It was 23, 24 inch yeah, fish. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Something. And uh, <laughs> I'm trying to reach out over the engines with a gaff, and I'm, I'm like right there, and he catches a breath. Like he's floating on the surface there. Yeah. Catches his breath and goes. I'm like, Straight oh. down. Oh man, that's funny. Next fish on the on the bottom rod and uh, the mutton, good mutton. Kept him. Had one on the drift back. Um, and these are all cookie cutter fish. Yeah. When we say when I say cookie cutter, I mean anything from like that 18 to 24, 25 inch range. They're like once you get on them like that, the like, lot yeah they'll, 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 they'll all be the same. They'll, they'll kind of be the same in size. And randomly you'll get a big one, but they'll they'll, they'll be the same in size. But then we did that, called a big Margate, um, and then the blacks took over. Oh, really? Yeah. I got a nice black about 18 to 20 pounds. How deep did you say you were? Oh, 100, 110 feet of water. Wow, nice. And uh, got them on 30 pound. Really? Yeah, but oh, that's two, impressive. two legal ones on 30 pound. Of course, we had to throw both of them back. It's out of season. Um, and then caught a couple of yellowtail and stuff yeah. mixed in, but I mean, for out front fishing for the half yeah, day. Yeah, no, that's great for a half that, day. Dude. Yeah. Half days always stressed me out because it's just like, especially if you try to catch bait, it's like, you really, with the run, excuse me, you, you really don't have much of a window to like put something together. And people, I mean, you know, people people will book half days and they're like, yeah, well, we want to catch a marlin and a cobia and then the limit of snappers. Oh, yeah. But a half day, it really, in the fishing world, it flies by. So to be able to put something together on a half day, it got to the point where I quit running them or didn't even like to run them because, they were so stressful, but I mean that's well, for and for a half day that's pretty good. That's why I price them that way. Yeah, I absolutely. price them. I price them, and then when <laughs> price people, them out. <laughs> yeah, and then when people ask, I, I tell them I don't like to run them, and if still book them, yeah, so, you know, we're still, yeah, yeah, and, still and, and there's a, there's a, there's definitely a place for it, and if, if conditions are right, they do they yeah. do work out. But um, yeah, there's been several times I've been on a half day like. Man, what else am I gonna do? Like we caught fish already. <laughs> I'm thinking about what I got in the fish box to I, cut. The, like man, this isn't happen, worth the half day price. Like yeah, we're... those never happen. I'm like man. <laughs> I wish it was like this every day. Yeah. But um, what else you've been seeing? Have you done? I was talking to Garrett. He doesn't run out of the Gulf a lot. I always forget he's got that inboard. Um, you done anything with the lane snappers? I have not. I have not. Uh, a couple of guys at the marina there with me 
have been doing a decent amount yeah. of them. Yeah, I've been seeing some of the guys coming up with them, some of the commercial guys catching them too. Um, yeah, the only time I've been going to the golf here has been king fishing. Yeah, the commercial king fishing, yeah. but it's been pretty slow, huh? From what everyone's saying, so it, so. It was slow, and then we finally got on the fish. Almost like a late run. Oh, late I mean, run. we're kind of coming up on yeah. the yeah. Like, that's what I thought. So we're doing, we're doing, pretty much limits every day. Wow. The guys that are going out there, I've had charters, and before that it was blowing. A couple of guys got bigger boats than me. Yeah. yeah. I, got a, I got a little more sense yeah, too. It's a lot. <laughs> I love my boys to death, but you got you got to be tough to commercial king fish. Trust yeah. me. So we got the, the commercial airport here. And then the, Naval Air Station's over here right behind us. There's quite a bit of planes coming out of Key West. But um, what else you been, I mean, anything else you've been seeing? Uh, changes? I mean, we're kind of coming up on that springtime where things start to shift. When I was coming in from the reef today, you know how you get that light powder in the springtime? Uh -huh. It was there. It's the sails and the, it's well, what, as we start to see this bluefin rolling too. They yeah, like no, that it, stuff. It's, it's coming. I know it, about the bluefin. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, he knows. It's coming i'm actually yeah. excited yeah uh, i'm gonna try to do some more sail fishing and stuff this year yeah try to hone on that i do a lot of bottom fishing so to get a little and, more east wind and, uh, yeah a little choppy yeah so it's definitely gonna get choppy all those ballyhoo push up on the reef and the sailfish it gets a little choppy they just go nuts it's yeah. just it's if you if that's your thing the time is coming yeah um like last year our run was this time yeah it was like the last three days of february this normally is... it's end of march april this has it's been a such a weird thing. year though for weather and like a lot of the stuff is I don't want to say delayed but like a little off you know just because we've had all those weird systems come from the west like I mean how many days a year do we get west wind and how many days like how many fronts have started with a really hard west wind this year it's, it's been an odd year it's your, your winter yeah odd winter yeah. yeah you'll get that west wind right before the front but like we're getting it the day before and, and it's like a violent like those, a violent, three, those three yeah. storms that came through were like almost tropical yeah. storm force and then that one we had to go from west to the north oh yeah and then it went to the east the following day <laughs> everybody then, was like what is then, going and on and then it came from the south at 25 mile an hour and it, i mean it was murked up everywhere yeah, right it, here it, was it just wrecked you everything. couldn't see your hand in front of your face here at the marina yeah that's not a common thing so in the winter time prevailing wind is normally you get those cold fronts that come out of the north they'll start a little west and then they'll switch once it hits blow north two days and then they'll switch east sometimes but it's just been really, really weird weather. Supposedly it's El Nino or something. I yeah, don't know. I don't. Something's going on. We know that for sure. I checked Windfinder and I know the 10 day forecast, kind of. Yeah. Because they never know exactly yeah. what the forecast is. <laughs> they don't. Just... My favorite thing is when they update it as it's happening. Yeah. It's like I'm out there getting beat to death and they're like, oh, oh, you... oh JK, it's going to be 20 knots today, not 10. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah I know. No, I figured that out. I, I appreciate I, it. I looked at six o'clock in the morning when I was drinking my coffee and I'm like, man, it's going to be a great day. <laughs> they double checked just to see what the. Dude, they saying he's doing to they, see what the real-time thing is and they, they've changed the whole forecast yeah on. no i know it's like someone's out there calling i'm like hey you guys got it wrong you need to change it yeah people have been calling asking like hey so how's the weather in in march and how's it in april like it's it's gonna blow a little bit it's gonna be a little it's gonna be bumpy. a little sporty yeah. yeah it's definitely known for a little bit of wind but the fishing is normally normally pretty good if you can if you can man out the seas and and deal with it it's normally pretty good fishing yeah um Anything else come to mind? You got anything else to share? Any, any any memorable catches this month? Well, for me, I, <laughs> take it, that with a grain of salt. I don't know what this means yet. Hold on. No. So I, I, day before, I was out front. Tough day of fishing. Like bottom fishing was not. It, it was one of the hardest days I've had fishing in a while. Yeah. And it kind of like today just flipped the switch. Uh, my first bait down was on the drift back on that light. Floor yeah. garbage. Yeah. Trying to catch the yellowtail. I didn't wave, but I think the menu was over eight pounds. Holy crap. That's a big one. I got a, I got a little video of my size 11 next to it. And then I, I zoom in so you could see the lane. Could the only, you know, it's a yeah. goldfish for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah. That's like a, a stud. A, a stud on the reef for us is four pounds, yeah. right? Five pounds, if that. And then to catch him, and I'm, I'm looking over the side of the boat. I'm sorry. Like, you heard the drag. But right? yeah, that's the first thing that comes to mind is wow. one snapper. I mean, that's a full blown. Yeah, and I'll look back. over and I see him. That's good luck. Yeah, look a little closer. I'm like, hey, it's pale. He must have been sitting on the sand. Yeah, get full post. I'm like, oh, it's a mega <laughs> snapper. <laughs> that's I a full blown. I don't, I don't want to stick him with the gaff. I'm trying to caress him out of the yeah. water. He wouldn't open his gills from my hand to get in there. Oh man! Finally, I was here. 
pick the gaff up and poked him in the belly. I didn't want to mess him up. That's a stud. That, yeah, it's a stud. I mean, that's Gulf of Mexico deep wreck you know, spawn yeah, right that's, there. Wow, 60, 70 miles in the Gulf. I mean, my biggest ever, ever is like nine, two, nine, six. Maybe I had one that was flirting with him, but I mean, for the, especially for the Atlantic side, not during the spawn, like that's, that's a monster. Did you get a picture of it? I have a video that we could screenshot. <laughs> We're going to screenshot it right yeah, now for you. Um, well, sick, man. I appreciate you coming by. Um, you got any availability coming up? Yeah. yeah. My okay. march is like really slow right now. Okay. Oddly. What, uh, um, what's the best way to get in contact? Your phone number, website? Yeah, phone number is the best. Say, say like, it out loud so they got it. I'll put it on the screen too. Well, I'll put the number up there? Yeah, say it. 305-849-3098. Call Captain Zach and uh, he'll get you out on the warrant. Yes. Like the emails and stuff, I can get back to you, but sometimes they get sent to junk and it's... The phone's in his pocket. The phone's in my pocket. I get in trouble for being all that too much. <laughs> it may take him two days to call you back. Yeah, I don't even uh, look at my phone anymore. I hate it. That's tough. <laughs> but you have to. We, we, we have to. Yeah. Um, well, second, man, I appreciate it. Um, that is all I have. Uh, we had a couple of people that were supposed to come, and they, they weren't able to make it, unfortunately. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, Please leave some feedback. I would love to know if you guys enjoy these. I would like to do a monthly if possible. I think it's kind of fun. Like I said, give you guys some information. Some of you guys from out of town may enjoy it. Um, big thanks again to the docs for letting me use this space. If you guys are looking for a nice dinner, happy hour, like I said, there's a good chance you'll run into myself. Um, it's one of my favorite places. Overlooks the harbor and sunset and they got all kinds of cool stuff over here. So, um, but other than that, we will see you on the next one. Next month, we will do another fishing report and I'll see you then. Later. So get good. <laughs> I know. I want to try and get. I'm I excited. I want to try and get like Johnny B or someone over here, but trying to get him without dropping an f bomb every sentence is going to be tough. Yeah, but it would be cool. hysterical. You know who else I wanted? I was talking to Garrett about. I'm gonna call him out. He he does. There's no way he watches my videos. But it'd be really funny. Jack Walker. <laughs> Dude, his stash is good right now. It's it's. I gotta it up. I gotta get Jack over here. It's twisted up. We won't talk about fishing. It'll be 30 minutes of just one-liners, but it'll oh. be it'll be worth it. His dad jokes are great. <laughs> we will see you next time. Yes. <laughs>